that says that we're on before we do get going here and we are on. Hey guys, how you going? Today on Big Sport, we're going to be going through the entire uh, State of Origin Series of 2022, each and every single player. I think it's about 38 players here, 39 players here. And we're going to rank them on elite quality, did a job, not that great, LG Mama, and not enough game time. Obviously, we did this for game one and also game two, but this is obviously a live stream. I was going to go to the Brisbane Rule game tonight, but I decided against it. I decided I'd sit here and uh, obviously stream this one and go through with you guys, uh, I guess, uh, my thoughts about the Origin series and also allow you guys to have a bit of a say as well. Uh, in the comments section, I'll go back and forth to you guys, but obviously, predominantly, I'm going to be saying, um, giving you my thoughts, obviously. Uh, so uh, we're going to be going through each individual one. Now, obviously, I just, I've just i got to get used to this. I've just got my myself right in front of me down there so that I can see when I do switch it over here because... Um, it's a little bit of a shambles right now. I'm going to make sure that I'm in the right positioning and whatnot. Otherwise, it is a little bit there. So that's basically what we're going to be doing, guys. As you can see there, we're going to go eat through each individual uh, player ranking for the season. And uh, obviously, Game 3 was incredible last night. Just simply incredible. And it's going to be difficult, actually, because obviously, Game 1 and Game 2 are included in this, this ranking here. So although we're not going to do an individual ranking for Game 3... It's going to be a lot of just including all three of them. So it's going to be really tough here. It's not going to be as easy as the last ones. We only have one game to go off. You have to kind of base it off all three. So guys, obviously hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe when you're out here. Let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. <clears throat> then we'll get underway. Like Ball takes his W stream. Never says did was spectacular. Handle the pressure with confidence. Uh, Lou I and Algie Mama Zempai says, Never says, hey, Blades Queensland. Yeah, good win for Queensland yesterday, mate. Good, great win for Queensland yesterday. And, um, you know, obviously, hopefully they... Uh, Hopefully they get next year as well, but no, it was a great, great year here for the uh, for the Maroons. And I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna do this like this, and we'll go mm. like that. And hopefully that's a little bit better here. And hopefully that's a little bit better there, um, so you get the full aspect. Alrighty, here we go, guys. Here we go. So uh, let's go into the first player here, and we've got Angus Crichton from New South Wales now. What do we say about Angus Crichton? I don't really think I saw a great deal from him across the entire series so far this season. I think that, uh, well not so far this season, throughout the series, so uh, all three games. I would say personally that I just don't think he was that great overall. I think that personally, I, obviously he didn't really play what game one. Game two, he was fine. He was pretty decent. But it wasn't anything spectacular. And then in game three, uh, honestly, I didn't think it was his game. You know, I didn't think it was his game. And uh, I, I, I would say personally... Uh, that I've got him in not that great. I, I, honestly, I understand why someone might be saying not enough game time there, but for me, I just didn't see enough in the game time that he did have. Obviously, yesterday, he played quite a large chunk of the game, and um, game two, you know, I, I get with the not enough game time, but I think that there's going to be a place here, like a Talakai, who I am going to rank, even though he didn't get a great amount of game time, but in that game time, you did see enough to give them a ranking. So for me... I've got Angus Crichton there. Wasn't one of the special players this year. There are going to be some players from New South Wales in Elite and also Queensland in Elite. doesn't matter that the Queensland won the series 2-1. Uh, I'm still going to put New South Wales players up there because there are some players that deserve it. Uh, but there more than likely will be more Queensland at the top because one, I'm a Queenslander. But secondly, you know, obviously they did win the series. So you do have to take that into account. But this is an individual player's performance. So I'm taking not that great there for Angus Crichton. Alrighty, next up here, we've got Apic Sight, got a sow, and this is a tough one. So, obviously, game one didn't play. Game two came in because Freddie was doing the copycat move of Ben Hunt and Harry Grant, which worked out so great with Queensland, and brought Apic Sight, got a sow in to, I guess, implement that same change, have him in the number nine there, uh, Harry Grant would come in off the 14. Uh, look, I thought that Apic Sight, got a sow was, was okay. Uh, I, I, I don't... I don't actually know what I want to do here because it's, it's in between the job and not that great because I just don't think the hookers really worked out for New South Wales this season. I don't really think they did well at all overall. I don't think they implemented too much into the game. It didn't impact a great on the game. But I'm going to go see what you guys are saying in the chat here. I want to see what you guys have to say about Apisa Kota South because I just don't believe personally that he was incredible in this series. Uh, Kota South, I think, at least did the job. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. So, like, it's between did the job and not that great. I don't think he was... I don't think he was horrible. I'll, I'll put him there. He'll probably be at the bottom end of that, did the job section, though, for me. I just, yeah, you know, obviously we see Ben Hunt and Harry Grant, we think, oh, wow, look how well that worked out for them. Even Harry Grant was outshunned by Ben Hunt throughout the series, which is incredible, considering Harry Grant, a lot of people think he's the best hooker in the game, locked on for that uh, number nine spot at the World Cup. But Ben Hunt was incredible there, so, you know... Um, that was that worked so well for Queensland. He said, well, I was tried it. It didn't necessarily work out there. It didn't necessarily work out. Lucas is not that great, but he was all right. Yeah, he, you know, he was he was there, thereabouts. He was there, thereabouts. Crazy New Zealand says, not that great. I expected more. Dosovitti, yeah, you got to expect a little bit more there from Dosovitti. Man up, he's that got a sour, but 
unfortunately, it wasn't there. So I'll put him there, do the job, but I believe he probably will go to uh, the bottom and do the job. Next up here, we'll go to Benny Hunt, and this is obvious. This is obvious. Now, that Ben Hunt try for Queensland was like that James Tedesco try in 2019 for New South Wales. That was an incredible try, clutch moment there, finished it off and won the game there for Queensland. Obviously, they were leading already through the Ponga try, but that Ben Hunt try there was what made Queensland know they've won the game. It was effectively the game-winning try. And Ben Hunt this season has been absolutely superb. Now, you guys know me. I battle for Ben Hunt Week in, week out, day in, day out on these streams, in videos, on my TikTok, on my uh, Instagram, everywhere. I'm always saying Ben Hunt is the most underrated player in the competition because he dropped a ball seven years ago. This was redemption in game three, but not even just game three. In game two, he wasn't the greatest, but he still did his job. In game one, he was fantastic, and in game three, he was incredible. So you have to put him in the league there. There's no way you can't put him in there. I'm not basing this off one try. Let's put it that way. Let's just... Let's just you know, realign and, and, and focus and say this is not about one try that happens in the 80th minute. He has been a great player for Queensland throughout this three-game series, and I'm telling you right now, if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't be winning. And last year in 2021, game three, he won off his own back as well, like a monster in 2020. In 2021, it was Ben Hunt, and in 2022, you could argue Ben Hunt obviously got the job done there again in game three. So for me, yeah, I've got him going into a league. Also, the 40-20 uh, that he kicked before the try. People are forgetting about that as well. Absolutely, Danny DeVito. You know, that 40-20 was just incredible. Um, best nine of the game, Keno says. Uh, oh, it's a big call. It's a big call. I think that he is incredible. I think he really is great. But is he better than Harry Grant? I understand this series, he has looked better than Harry Grant. But is he overall better than Harry Grant? I'm not too sure. But I think that Ben Hunt, yeah, look, his best position is nine. Obviously, he plays halfback with the Dragons. McCulloch's in the nine there. I would love to see more of Ben Hunt at, in the nine. And I think it's going to be a really interesting predicament there for the uh, Australian side, the Kangaroos at the end of this year, when they've got to select their Rugby League World Cup side. Do they go with Harry Grant? Do they go with Benny Hunt? Do they go with Damien Cook? You know, all three of those. Get, Damien Cook is normally the guy there, but Harry Grant, young bloke coming through, he's put his name there. And now, because of this series, Ben Hunt has really just gone bang right in your face. So, you know, it's an incredible uh, incredible change of scenery here for Benny Hunt. And like I said, redemption here for him. So I'm talking about an elite, and I don't think anyone can argue that. Next up here, let's go to Brian To'o of New South Wales. And I'm going to put him in quality. I thought Brian To'o was, was fine. I thought that Brian To'o defensively, specifically last night as well, was, was great. I thought he was given his best every single game. I thought, obviously, game two, was fine. it was great. Uh, game one, he did what he could with what he could. Obviously, they lost 16-10, but... It wasn't necessarily his fault at all. And I think with game three, I actually thought he was still pretty quality. I thought he was one of the better players in the field there for the Blues. So for me, overall, you're not going to be putting him as elite because he didn't really do an unbelievably impactful amount. But you're a winger. You can't really expect an unbelievable impactful amount from the winger. The wingers are the bonus. The halves and the hooker is meant to get the ball out there. The forwards are the platform. The centre has to pass him the ball. So it's like Brian O did what he could with what he could. And I thought that he was in quality for me. I thought he was in quality. And it's for NRL says quality, but more middle of quality for To'o. Yeah, look, I, I don't think he's going to be up, upper end. I think he could even be lower end of the quality section. But that does come down a bit to his positional, uh, where, where what his position is for me personally. Uh, Hayden says, so he did his job. Oh, Brian To'o is above to his job. Brian To'o is above, um, above to the job there. Oh, but all right, let's move on to the next one here. And it's a difficult one because it is Cameron Munster. So Cameron Munster obviously was incredible game one. He was the man in the match in game one. Game two, it did go a bit missing in that. So he did go missing in the second half with literally every other Queenslander. But the first half, he was still very good. He was probably the best player on the field for Queensland in that first half. And then game three, he misses it with COVID. Now, everyone in the world, you know, the rugby league community thought the Queensland had lost already basically on the fact that mm -hmm. Munster was out. But, you know, Queensland obviously just absolutely killed it without him with Tommy did and but I do want to throw this out there that Munster still laid the platform for them to get to where they got to, right? Because game one, without his performance, they don't have that 1-1 one, one there. New South Wales probably win that. It makes it 2-0 going into the Suncorp game. So for me, I'm going to have to put him... I'm going to have to put him... It's, 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 it's either bottom of elite or, or top of quality because you can't realistically... I'm going to put him here. And the only reason I'm going to put him there is because he did miss the, cl the clutch game and the crunch game. It's kind of unfair to the guys who are going to put in the lead here who played all three games to have Cam Munster who didn't play the big, you know, physical, um, crazy, hectic game that we saw uh, in game three. And for me, I think this might be a little bit controversial, but I'm going to put him probably at the top end, very top, of quality. What would you guys say to that? Sam says elite. Yeah, high-end quality, Lucas says. 
Uh, Mephito says, Master may not have played in game three physically, but he was there with us spiritually. Okay, that's a bit of a lame comment. But um, yeah, cool. Um, I, I think that, yeah, I, I'm going to be happy to put him at the top end of quality. I don't think he goes any lower. I, I think that you could argue, obviously, he goes higher. But for me, I'm, I'm going to put him there just based on the fact that he did not play that game three, in my personal opinion. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, uh, Horne says high end quality. Yeah. Uh, Wood says, I'd say no New South Wales 3 goes above Munster, but Teddy. Well, you know, we'll see how we go. We'll see as we get through it here. Uh, but alrighty, let's move into the next one here. And it's going to be Cameron Murray from New South Wales. Hmm, how do we go about this one? So obviously yesterday he went out in the first minute of the game, which was very, very unfortunate there uh, due to a HIA. Uh, where do we put him here? Because his game one was not great. His game one was very, very poor. And his game two was a, it was decent. Um, there was enough game time though, because he's played two games at this point. He played two games, so he did play two games, didn't he? I, I would nearly say I, I would. This is really hard because game two, I think he would have had a good game three. I think game two was a good one for him, but I, I, I really do think I'm going to put Cameron Murray above Crichton here and not that great, just simply because he had that that good, decent game two. I don't think Algie Mama is fair. Some people are saying Algie Mama, but I think that, yeah, Sam says not enough game time. He still played game one and two, though, man. You know, that's still 160. Oh, I don't even play 160 minutes, but like he, he still played two games. So the guys who are going to go into that not enough game time, they're going to be guys who really didn't get enough game time, who really, you know, I, I know I'm looking at one right now who's actually going to go into that one. So <clears throat> for me, I think he had enough there. Uh, thank you very much to John O'Egan saying, so remember me, you need to become an NRL commentator, uh, communicator, a commentator. I appreciate you, dude. Thank you very much for the donation. Um, uh, yeah, and some people are saying not that great. Some people are saying in the middle of the, did the job. I'm going to put him at the top of not that great. But then again, I feel it's unfair because of yesterday. But I think we wipe game three from our minds. We go to game two and game one. And, oh, okay, we'll put him at the bottom end. We'll put him at the bottom end because he did have that decent game two. So we'll put him at the bottom end. I'll do the job. Next up here, Daily Jerry Evans. Wow, wee. What a series from him. Game one, game, the first half was not great. It was terrible. The second half was phenomenal. It was a great second half there from Jerry Evans in game one. Game two, not great at any stage of the game. Was terrible. He wo he was an ouchy mama for Queensland and was absolutely dreadful. Game three had a captain's knock. That was absolutely superb from Cherry Evans last night. Had 650 kicking meters. You know he was directing the play. He was leading from the front. It was a very very good play. Nearly had a try if it wasn't for the fight between Burton and Gagai. Uh, I personally have Cherry Evans this in this series based on. Uh, it was a big part of that first game. He's not going to be in elite. He's going to be in quality. He's going to be in quality. I'm, I'm going to put him in quality. I'm going to put him... I'm going to have to put him above Brian's O, but I'm going to put him below Munster. And the reason being is because obviously Munster did lead that charge in game one. Cherry Evans led that charge game two. In game, uh, Sorry, game three. And then in game two, they were both in the same team and they both kind of struggled, but Munster did have the better first half there. So I'm going to leave Munster over the top of Cherry Evans. But it should really come into account. Like you could definitely argue this. You could definitely argue Munster going there uh, because of the fact that Cherry Evans did it in the decider. But for me, I'm going to put him in the middle of quality. So let me know what your thoughts are in the chat there. Bottom did the job. Ed says you have no idea about rugby league. You have absolutely no idea about rugby league if you think Cherry Evans was bottom did the job. You're an idiot. Alrighty, and like that's not even an opinion. Like if that's your opinion, I'm sorry, but you deserve to have you deserve to be spoken to like this. Uh, truly, because that's it makes no sense. It, it makes no sense. What on, on what planet do you have Sherry Evans at the bottom of did the job after last night's performance and the second half of game one's performance? You know, but yet you have Munster in quality who didn't play last night, had a great game one, but also had a pretty similar game two. It makes no sense. So if, you, if your thought process is that Sherry Evans is at the bottom of, of did the job, then I'm sorry, but you should, you know, get into ballet. Next up here, let's go to Damien Cook for the Blues. And for me, guys... I'm going to put him in the Archie Mama section. Yeah, I'm going to put Damien Cook in the Archie Mama section. I thought he was not great in the series. I thought game one... Oh, you guys know me. I'm a big fan of Damien Cook. I've always been getting around the Cookie Meister. He hasn't been feeling the season for the Rabbitohs and hasn't been feeling the season for New South Wales. I think game one was just bland. Game two, bland again. It wasn't the hookers that won that game. Game two for New South Wales. It was the back line. It was Nathan Cleary. That's what won the game two for New South Wales. And then in game three... 
I thought he was dreadful when he came on the field. You know, obviously, most of the time, Apisar Kotosau was the hooker there. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought Damian Cook was was really poor this series. And look, we all know that he can he can really uh, recapitulate the form that we've seen in, in the past. But I think that obviously, yeah, this series was not a good one for him. And it's going to be interesting to see how he goes towards that origin, not origin, sorry, the International Rugby League World Cup at the end of this year. Because Harry Grant and Ben Hunt, you've already seen Ben Hunt at the top of the elite there. Apisar Kotosau will go to Fiji, so it's all right. But Harry Grant is also going to be above Alchi Mama. He's not going to be crazily higher, but he's going to be above Alchi Mama. So there's two Queenslanders there who won the series. One of them was a big part of why they won the series. I wonder if Damien Cook's going to be able to get that Australian spot. I really don't. I really don't necessarily believe it. Uh, Blissey Queensland says he's just trying too much when playing. Relax will help him. Never says, I still think Cook's a great player. Just had a, he's just had such a horrible year. Yeah, it's just not been one of his years. You know, uh, I don't think he was unbelievable last year, but this year has definitely not been his year for me. Absolutely not. Uh, Tigers fans said, I can't argue with Archie Mama, unfortunately. Lucas says, I don't know if Cook was that bad. Can see the argument, though. But, like, what did he do? If you tell me one thing he did, I can't think of a single thing that he did. Thank you very much to uh, John Egan for the $2 donation, my guy. Obviously, it's, uh, you know, we're going to be obviously talking about rugby league here, mate. Um, but like I can understand why you might look at him as not that great, but what did he do? I can't think of a single highlight play that Damo Cook did. I can't think of a single highlight play. So yeah, for me, I believe in Ashley Mama, and that's what I've uh, too much beat sprinting, Luke said, Lucas says. Alrighty, let's move on to the next one here, and that's me, Dan Gagai. So Dan Gagai, game one, gave a try on his side, uh, was still very passionate what he was doing, but I didn't think he had a great game. But we still won, obviously. I think it had him and did the job. Uh, I think that obviously game two was dreadful. He got so many tries on that side. Honestly, got, they got absolutely pumped on that side. Uh, game three last night, though, I thought he was pretty quality. Obviously, that fight that happened with Burton, that Burton and Gagai both initiated with each other. Obviously, Gagai thought that uh, Burton shoved over Ponga, which you could argue, and then Gagai goes and shoves over Burton, and then Burton, after getting shoved over, comes back in for the punch on. So you can argue that the whole confrontation starts with uh, Dan Gagai, but the actual punch on itself comes to the guy who's running in for the fight. So it, it really does come out of perspective. I can see why New South Wales fans are upset. I can see why Queensland fans are like, shush, man, like, relax. You know, settle down, Karen. And it's like, settle down, Karen. They were both willing participants. And also, Burton was the one who ran over to him in the first place, but I understand the whole situation, right? But Dan Gagai, uh, that got off track a little bit there. Dan Gagai, I thought, was did the job this series. I think he did the job. I think that... For me, I'm going to put him there. I don't think he's going to be on top of the did the job, but I think that he's going to be probably around that media medium mark. Decent last night. Probably last night was his best game, actually, for Queensland. Game two and game one, not the greatest, but I do still think he did the job overall compared to a lot of these other guys that are going to be here, personally. Uh, Gagai Elite for the Biff, he says. Uh, Keno says, Gagai, actually, Mama, most missed tackles of any player, apparently. Well, that's a big call. Okay, well, if that's the truth, can you guys confirm that for me? Because if that is confirmed, I will move that down to here. If that's true, if he has the most missed tackles, I'll put him down to there. Otherwise, I'm going to put him up there. I, I still think he's going to be midway, though. No, you know what? Regardless, I still think Gagai overall as in a series did more than what I saw from Mappy Sarkozy and also Cameron Murray. But if you want to be pedantic about it, I'd put him maybe here because at least Mappy Sarkozy was giving it a... Re no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't I, I can't do it. It is true. Uh, you know what? Because of all the missed tackles, we'll put him there. And that game too, he did get peppered down that side. So I'll put him there underneath Mappy Sarkozy but above Cameron Murray there. Next up here, we're going to go to Daniel Tupo. Very difficult one here. Had a really good game two. Had a really good game one in regards to stats. Not in regards to necessarily what people can see, but in regards to stats, he had a very good game one and game two. Game three, dreadful. Just horrible. Just horrible. I don't care what the stats say. He was horrific. Queensland got that try right on half time. That changed the game from his mistake. From his mistake. Didn't he touch that ball? Touched it, went out. Queensland ended up scoring there through Kirk Caitlin on the right-hand side. You know, multiple times got caught out in his wing. Really, really poor. So that really comes back into your thought process. And I will throw this out there too. You do have the the, the thought process in the back of your mind, regardless of if you want it to be there or not, of the Josh Adakar situation. I personally still believe that Adakar would have added a lot more to this Blues team than Tupo, but I still think that no matter what, after game one and game two, I wasn't going to be dropping him. You know, New South Wales shouldn't have been dropping him based on the fact that he still had a very solid, not explosive, but solid game one and two. And I said this before the season started, when Tupo got selected and everyone was like, what's going on here? I said, Tupo is a solid, great, solid option. Defensively sound, usually. And uh, usually, yeah, he gets the, um, 
usually he gets the job done quite well there uh, and has been quality in the past. It hasn't been, you know, the greatest for, for a little bit there. Uh, but look, obviously it hasn't been a great season for me uh, in regards to Daniel Tupo. I'm, I'm actually going to put him... I'm going oh, it's, to... It's, I'm going to... Like, what do they do explosiveness-wise? I'm going to put him there because he still had a pretty good game. Oh, I'm going to put him above Karen Murray. I think last night really does hamper down my thoughts about him, but I really do. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to put my phone up here so I can see your comments. I think last night really, really uh, kind of gives me a bit of the the heebie-jeebies, is what I'll say. The I guess the ick for the females out there in regards to how Daniel Tupo played. I just I really ended the series off so poorly, and it makes you think what would have been if they had someone like a Joshua Dakar there. So I'm going to put him into the job because of that game one and game two. But I'll have him low end. I will, I'll have him low end there. Um, and it says, honestly, felt sorry for Whiten. That's a different position. Um, hey, this is Eric and Tupo, not the great. But guys, look at the stats from game one and two. I understand that you guys don't understand how well he played in game one and game two because you don't see those kind of things. You don't see the meters made, made that he's doing. You don't see how much he's actually bringing the ball back with tough runs. Game three is too much in your mind if you think he's in Aoshi Mama. You, there's no way. Throughout a series, throughout a three-game series, there's no way you can tell me that Daniel Tupo was Aoshi Mama. In game one, he was the top three New South Wales players on the field in a losing team. In game two, he was still great. He was still, I think we still put him in quality. In game three, you would put him in Alchie Mama. But you've got to equalize that out. So you have one, you have two in quality, game one and game two, you have them in quality. Oh, you argue game two is at the job. So you've got one quality, one to the job, and one Alchie Mama. For me, I've got him low end of the job there based on that one. You can't bite too much into one game. Because if you don't believe you had a good game one and game two, then you're crazy. You're crazy, you're crazy. You're crazy. I thought it was game three. No, this is the entire series, mate. This is the entire series. We're doing an entire series review here. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy with Daniel Tubo there. I'm going to put a foot down and say I'm not putting him below. I uh, did the job. Uh, but in game three individually, actually, remember. Next up here, Felice Kafusi. Uh, he didn't even play game three. Did he? How much minutes did he play in game one and game two? How many, how many minutes... Did Felice Kafusi play in game one and game two? Can you guys let me know in the chat right now? Where would you put Felice Kafusi? Because I might put him in not that great. I'm probably going to put him in not that great. Or even Algie Mama. I could actually consider Felice Kafusi for Algie Mama if he's had enough minutes here. Because he probably played the full length of pretty much game one. He probably played a very decent chunk of game two. Uh, I think... Um, one second here. So I, I think first game he played half. Uh, th first game he played half. Hold on one second. I've got to stop that. Uh, not that great, middle too low, not that great. Yeah, I'm going to put him in not that great. I, I could, I'm, I'm going to put him below Crichton there. Um, I really, uh, yeah, he hit one hole. Yeah, but it's great. I'm going to put him in not that great. So I was getting a call there, distracted me as I was doing that. Uh, I'm going to put him in not that great. I, I, I would be kind of happy to also put him into Algie Mama, um, but I'll leave him there. I'll, le I'll leave him. No, you know what? No, I disagree with myself. I'm going to put him here. I'm going to put him here. I, I didn't see anything from Felice. Didn't play game three, and it wasn't his series. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say that. The only thing I remember about Kavuzi was the try in game two and the sim bin. Yeah. No, I'm going actually Mama. I think it was a pretty poor series for him, personally. Alrighty, Harry Grant. Now Harry Grant, you I don't think he had an unbelievable series. I think that game two he was one of the worst in the field. I think game one he was above decent. I'd say top end of the job, maybe low end quality. And I thought I think Game three, I would say that he wasn't the best hooker on the field, and I don't think he did an unbelievable amount. And we saw a lot of Ben Hunt and Harry Grant on the field at the same time, actually. I think Grant, I think Grant, I'm probably going to put, did the job. I'm going to probably put him above Appy Cyclosau, but I don't know if he's going to be the highest there. I'm going to put Harry Grant as the top end of the job for now, because at very minimum, he did better than the New South Wales hookers. At very minimum. And did have a good, decent game one. Had an okay-ish game three. And game two was dreadful. So I think I'll, I'll put him into the job. Yeah, I want to say into the job. Now, I wouldn't say not that great, Hayden. I wouldn't say not that great. I wouldn't say not that great. But I'd say top end of the job there. Alrighty, Isaiah Yo. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to put him in not that great. I'm going to have to put him in not that great there. I would have expected a lot more from Isaiah Yo. Best lock in the business. Uh, wasn't his series. Didn't see much from game one. Saw enough about him in game two to say he was a probably a mid-end to top end of the job. And then game three, didn't see him at all. Um, I, I've definitely got him not that great. I've got him above... Oh, do I have him above Crichton? Yeah, I'm going to put him above Crichton. I'm going to put him above Crichton. It's a tough one, though, because I've got them both similarly not having really much impact at all throughout the series. 
but I'll put Yo just on top of him there personally. Lucas says most of the Panthers struggled the series. Yeah, I guess maybe it was his chase on Ben Hunt was commendable. Yeah, I guess that's what gets him above Crichton. I guess the the chase on Ben Hunt is what I commend him with. I guess the chase on Ben Hunt is what I commend him with. So I'll put him in another great. There's not much to speak about there. Next up here, Jacob Saifidi. You're gonna to have to put him in enough game time. You do. Uh, I know that he obviously had a really good game three in regards to parts, but he also didn't play the full game and scored a try, which was unbelievable. But he didn't play game two. He didn't play game one. I think there's a lot of potential there with Jacob Safidi. I didn't believe in him. A lot of people out there didn't believe in him. For me, I'm going to have to put him in not enough game time. There just wasn't enough for me to actually you know, solidify him across all three games because he only played you know, three quarters, half to three quarters of, of, of game three. Uh, but he says, uh, yeah, no, it's game time. Absolutely. All right, that's all we need to really say there about the Jacob Safedi. But I'm so glad that he was able to prove people wrong, you know, including myself. I'm so glad Jacob Safedi was able to come in and prove people wrong. I think he's a Lindsay Collins type. That I don't really see too much of a Lindsay Collins at the Roosters. And I don't really see too much of Jacob Safedi at the Knights. But both of them have had pretty good, you know, uh, when they've come in here for the Origin, both of them have, have really told people to shush. Both of them. Next up here, Jai Arrow. Um, I'm going to personally put Jai Arrow in not that great. I don't think I saw much from Jai Arrow at all. I'd even probably put him there. I don't think it was Jai Arrow's best series. I think that he really struggled to have any impact on the game. I think that the, the game style never really suited him overall. And I think Game 3 was maybe his best of the lot, but there still wasn't a great deal to, to be seen there personally. Um, yeah, everyone's saying not that great as well. I think that, yeah, I, I never really seen him do the job specifically in, in any of the games. I think maybe if at best would be game three. So, yeah, that's my personal opinion there. If anyone disagrees, you know, let me know. Double everyone says, um, Ponga was my best part of the series. That's great. We're not at Ponga yet. Another says, oh, that's right. Uh, Lucas says, not that great. Hey, not that great. All right, there we go, guys. So we'll put him in a not that great above Crichton. You will put him above Crichton. All righty, J.Q. Trebojevic. Jake Boyish didn't really do too much in Game 3 for me. He might have been decent on the defensive end. Obviously, Blues probably defended and got a lot of tackles, and Jake Boyish probably would have been one of them. I haven't seen the stats. So if you guys can let me know in the chat what his stats were, that'd be great. But I think he had a great Game 2. I think he was exceptional in Game 2. Didn't play Game 1, obviously, because Freddie Fittler is a Muppet. And Game 3, I think, from what I saw, I didn't really see a crazy amount from him. There's no way I'd put him below to the job. If anything, if he had, if he has a good amount of tackles in Game Three, everyone's saying to the job. That's where I'm leaning with, and I'm leaning with putting him below Harry Grant above Cottesdale here. I'm thinking Jake was quiet in Game Three. I think we were targeting Jake this time. Um, Hayden is not that great, and there's no way he's not that great. I'm going to put him here. Oh no, geez, I'm going to no, I'm going to put him there. I'm going to put him there. Oh, he had a really good game. You know what? I'm going to say he'll get top end to do the job. And I say that because obviously that game two was spectacular. He had a spectacular game two. So I'm going to put him above Harry Grant there because at least he had that significant impact. I didn't see a significant impact from Harry Grant throughout the series. But also game three was quite quiet there from James Boyer, absolutely. All righty, James Tedesco. Throughout the series, I, I'm personally going to have him here. I'm personally, and I know a lot of people aren't going to like this, I personally, throughout the series, I have James Tedesco in elite, and I would personally say that he's above Ben Hunt for me. And the reason being is because in every single game of all three, and I know that the, the, the chat's probably going to disagree here, but in all three games, I saw him as the only guy from New South Wales who really was giving it everything in every game, making tackle breaks, uh, you know, defensively, he was sound for the most part. Uh, he was just incredible. Tedesco was the best fullback in the game. I don't want to hear anything about it. Tedesco was the best fullback in the game for the Roosters, for New South Wales. He will be the Australian fullback. And I simply had him in all three games as a top three player. In game one, I had Munster as the number one. I think I had Tedesco in two or three. Now in game two, I had Cleary as number one, but I think I had Tedesco in two or three. And in last night's game, I probably had him... Oh, you probably put him in top five because there was a lot of really good Queensland players last night but you still have him as the top player for New South Wales. So I think in every single game, Tedesco was my player of the match for New South Wales, besides clearing game two, and you put Tedesco down in the next one. So, yeah, I've got him above Ben Hunt. Let me know if you if you disagree with that one. Tell him reasonable. Jared Amalia says, uh, no, Teddy New South Wales loses by way more. Yeah, exactly right. No, Teddy and New South Wales would have lost that series by a significant amount for me. Yeah, uh, he was just so dangerous. Every time he touched the ball, crazy things he You're absolutely right. 
who's so dangerous, he's so versatile, he's so slippery, he's just incredible, man. You know, I'm sitting here wanking over James Tedesco, but, like, he deserves it. Like, he really does deserve it, man, and you got to love the, the Teddy Bunda, you know? you got to love... <laughs> we didn't get to see no Teddy Bunda. We didn't get to see no Teddy Bunda, but hopefully next time. Next up here, we get to an absolute flog, Jerome Luai. This guy, the reason why I have such a problem with Jerome Luai is that, okay, look, if you want to go back and you want to have a crack at, uh, if you want to go back and you want to have a crack at what's it called, uh, Jai Arrow for what happened a couple of, um, a couple of years back, or last year, whenever it was, right? I understand that, but with Jai Arrow, he firstly apologized for it, and secondly, he uh, was the first person to lament it. Jerome Luai yesterday stood over the top of a guy who was knocked out, and didn't call the medic, and he was just a dog, right? He's just a dog, and he just doesn't want to stop fighting. He wants to fight everyone, right? In regards to the playing, he didn't have a good game. For me, I didn't see him too much. He scored a try. Congratulations. Cool. You scored a try. But he's too much talking, not enough playing. And that's a big reason why Game 3, they lost, because he didn't get into it as much as he should have. He's always just trying to pick a fight with this guy and that guy and this guy and that guy and this guy. That's irrelevant with what happened earlier, but I just want to get that out of my system to say that. There's a difference between Jerome Luai and what Jai Arrow did. Because Jai Arrow was apologetic. Jerome Luai says, I don't have anything to apologize for. You're a dickhead, right? Game one, I thought Jerome Luai was better than Nathan Cleary. I thought game one, Jerome Luai was a top three player for New South Wales on the field. I think in game two, he was a bit quiet there. I thought Nathan Cleary was uh, I thought Nathan Cleary was obviously well and truly better. And then in game three, uh, what did we see? Game three, we saw, what's it called? Um, I, I didn't see truly a great deal from Jerome Luai at all. So, look, I think... I think for me, I do believe he did the job. I'm going to take away my bias of thinking he's a dickhead. And I'm going to put him and did the job somewhere. Where do I put him, though? I think maybe I did see... Like, I think he's definitely above Appy Cottesale. I think he's above Appy Cottesale. So Louis, Louis is a fraud and flop in the series. Threw a pass in the stands as well. <laughs> yeah, Tarkus Van Mickle did the job. That's why I'm putting him. I'm putting him above Appy Cottesale here. I'm putting him below Harry Grant. Yeah, Luai can get the job done, but his behaviour has been atrocious. Yeah, exactly right. You know, and that's the thing. Like, I don't mind passion. I don't mind getting involved. I don't mind the entertainment that Luai brings. He's an entertainer, and you've got to have characters like that in the game. But with this one here, it just it's just too much. It's just not acceptable. So he needs to really sort himself out, but he doesn't believe he's got anything to apologise for because he's a muppet. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to put I'm gonna put him... No, nah, you know what? I'm going to put him at the top end of the job. I'll put him on the top of the job because he definitely wasn't bad in any of the three games. I just don't think he was at his best in game three by any means. And game two was okay. Game one was the better half of the two. So, yeah, I'll put him at the uh, top end of did the job. Alrighty, next up here, I think that's Jeremiah Nanai, isn't it? Is that Jeremiah Nanai? It is Jeremiah Nanai. So, game three, he was incredible. Defensively is where we usually pick him apart. Game three, he played very well. There were multiple instances where I called out and said, wow, Luai, and uh, not Luai, Jeremiah Nanai is having a great game here defensively, compar comparatively to what he plays like for the Cowboys defensively and comparatively the first couple of games. Attacking-wise, you saw them kicking the ball to him quite a lot. They wanted to get involved in the game. Unfortunately, a couple of times he couldn't really get into the, into the game. I think he had enough time throughout the series to be in did the job, but I actually do have him as a, as a decent did the job too. I, I personally would have him here. I personally would have Jeremiah Nanai there because he's not. it's not going to be above Grant, I think the limited minutes do put him below him there. And I think that he did enough to warrant a spot into the job, despite the fact that he didn't get a great number of minutes. Obviously, game one, he went off injured after... Well, he thought he was injured, but he wasn't. Game two, we he was atrocious defensively. Atrocious. But game three... Oh, man. That game two really does bring him down. Yeah, I'm not going to put out big about him. And the reason being is that that game two really does bring him down there, man. And honestly... It's just tough because it's like that game two really is a is a is a tough one there. You could honestly put him even further down, but game three was very good defensively. As a Blues fan, I found Nanai an annoying player as he was protecting his wing. Good, that's exactly what you want to see. It's easy for feeder. Um, Nanai's best was game three for sure. Absolutely, game three was unreal. Yeah, I'm gonna leave him here. I'm gonna leave him there. But the reason why I put him below Coruscant out is because of that game two. The game two is still in my mind there. Uh, game one, I know we went off injured. Game three. Had a great one. So I'm going to put him into the job below Cottle South, but above Dane Gagai. Alrighty, next up here, Josh Papali'i. I thought he tried well last night. I think the last night was probably his best, but I'm going to put him here, unfortunately, for Josh. I just don't think it was a great series for him. I think that, obviously, the experience might have been necessary. 
but I just didn't see anything from Josh Papali'i. And you, you could honestly, I'm not going to put him here, but you could make an argument for it. I'm going to put him at not that great. And yeah, I, it's, it's definitely low end for me. It wasn't a spectacular series for him. It wasn't really him that was necessarily leading from the charge. He tried hard yesterday. I saw him going hard in the first half. But that was about it, really. That was about it, really, for me. So, yeah, Josh Papali at the bottom end are not that great. And I don't think there's much of a debate to put him in to do the job for me. Not that great. Low end, not that great. Yeah, so we can all relatively agree on that one. Okay. Junior Paulo here, I think, is the next one from New South Wales. Game one was woeful. He was the worst player on the field. Game one, he was the worst player on the field, no debate. Game two, he stood up. Game two, he absolutely stood up. He was fantastic. He was absolutely phenomenal. Game three was a bit of a mix. It's like he, he played well in parts, but he also made quite a few mistakes as well. I, I, I'm, I'm, like He just wasn't there for a lot of it. He wasn't there for a lot of it. I might... Oh, man. It's definitely he did the job because of that game two. I would want to put him at the top end of did the job, though. I'd want to put him maybe... No, you know what? I would put him... I forgot to say I was that middle, make, middle man right now. I've got him above Nanai. I do. Because that game two was something special from Junior Paulo. I'm going to say that he had more of an impact than Apricotta Sau in that game two. I think that Harry Grant's more consistent across the three, though. Oh. No, you know, I don't know. Low to the job, to the job, I'd say. Uh, Pong of the hot boy. Uh, he made a lot of meters, to be honest, and ran the ball when the others were tied. Yeah, I'm going to put him here. I, you know what? I'm actually going to put him above Grant for me. I'm going to put him above Grant. I think that Junior Paulo did try his best last night. I think that he was good in parts, but obviously there were times when obviously he was overshadowed quite a bit. I think game two was incredible and game one was really, really poor. So I'm going to put him above Harry Grant there because Grant did still have that really, really dreadful game two. Uh, that was a really, really dreadful game too. So yeah, uh, for me, I've got Paulo there. Oh, where's Whiten? That's a good call. Yeah, Jack Whiten's not here. Oh, that's frustrating. That's frustrating. Yeah, Jack Whiten's not on this uh, thing here, Mitchell Jeffries. Okay, well, for everyone out there, with Jack Whiten, which we would have already gone through if we had gone, because oh, we're obviously doing this in alphabetical order, with Jack Whiten, I would have put him in not enough game time, you know, because he only had game one. Oh, you, 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 yeah, I would put him in not enough game time. He only played game one. He played really, really good in game one, but there was not enough there for me to say comparatively with all three of these guys here to put him inside for me. Personally, he had a decent impact. They still lost the game. I would have put Jack Whiten into not enough game time personally. So let me just write that down so I can remember that. So when I do the... So guys, after this finishes, obviously, we're actually... We also have... Um, we also have... What's it called? Uh, we also have a uh, time stamps for each individual player. So you can come back and check it out. Or anyone who's watching this can obviously check out the individual player that they want. So Jack Whiten, I would put him in not enough game time personally. Okay, next up here, let's move to Kalen Ponga for Queensland. And Kalen Ponga for me, I have him here. I have him above Tedesco, and I have him above Benny Hunt. I thought Kalen Ponga in every single game was great. Game two, when they got pumped, I still thought he was the best player on the field for Queensland. In game one, he was top two, top three for Queensland. In game three, I had him as either the best or the second best player on the field. I think, and this is what really annoys me, right, is that people say he's overrated. No, he's not. You are now making him underrated because of your stupidity. Caelan Ponga is not overrated. Yes, obviously, maybe on, on a bit too much money that you ideally would give to him, right? But at Newcastle, he is not surrounded by quality players. Their halves and their hooker and their, their, even their back line and their forwards, they're all very bang on average. Caelan Ponga now goes to Queensland and he absolutely annihilates it. He's got too much pressure. He's the only individual there at Newcastle that really has that real kind of go forward. He touches the ball like 50 times a game sometimes, 35 to 50 times a game. And just like, it's crazy that people don't realize how good this player is. It just comes down to the fact that you need more than one individual top tier player at a club to be winning a premiership or, or to be going further than what the Knights have right now. So that's why I personally got him as the, the top man there. Um, you could argue Tedesco's above him. But I think that Callum Ponga, because he was such an impactful part of that game three and also a part of that game one and was the best on the field for Queensland in a game two loss by 40-odd points, that's why I put him at the top there. Ponga was one of the best players, if not the best player in defence, and he really stood up throughout the series. Uh, doesn't make sense. Stop spending the same shit, you muppet. I don't know. What's he said? I don't know. What's V-Link said? Yeah. What's V-Link says? Oh, Ponga's overrated. Yeah, yeah. You're, just, you're an idiot. 
Uh, Mitchell Jeffrey says, Pong was so dangerous in Game 3 whenever he had the ball, I was biting my nails. Yeah, Game 3 was, it was, it was wild. It was wild. Every time he touched the ball, I thought there was going to be a try. I thought he was going to break through. It was just simply ridiculous. Every time he touched that ball, I thought he was going to break through and he was going to run the length of the field. And in Game 2, he had two tries. One of them was a try assist. The other one was he broke down the line. He got the ball back on the inside and they got the ball back on the inside again. They scored a try. But Ponga set it up. So for me, game two, he had both tries, assists, which was really, really, really um, phenomenal. So yeah, I have uh, I have Cameron Ponga as the top man so far. Next up here, we'll go to Kurt Catewell. Last night was a very polarizing game from him. He was very poor in times, but he was also very good in moments. And that was a clutch try at the end of that first half. But he also was very poor in a lot of moments as well. Game two, dreadful. Game one, solid. That clutch try does have to mean something, though. I, I, I do put him probably in not that great. I'm, I'm thinking maybe here, though. I'm thinking above Yo, Arrow. Yeah, I'm definitely putting him there. Because of the clutch moment that he came up with last night, he had a couple of line breaks. But he was also very poor in a lot of the series. Uh, I know that in game... One, he went to centre because obviously the injury to Xavier Coates early days, they pushed Val Holmes, I think, to the wing or they put someone to the wing and they had Kirk Catewell in the centre. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't a good series for me. I think that at least game three, he wasn't to get that clutch try, which really helped him out on that 40-minute marker. Um, a lot of people are saying low to the job. I still think he did more in regards to that clutch moment. There was at least an individual moment for Kirk Catewell throughout the series that helped his team to win rather than Yo or Arrow or Crichton. Or Papa Lee, for me personally. Um, I say Bottomer did the job. See, I can understand what you're saying, the main guy. I can. But the only reason is, the only reason that separates... Because Not That Great are all very similar. And Not That Great, it's just like to the job, is all very similar. This is just... We're putting them in order, but they're also still on the same tier, if you know what I'm saying. So it doesn't really... There's not really too much of a gap. I personally will disagree with you, and I'll say that he had at least an individual moment that separated him from those guys at the bottom. But you can move him anywhere through. So we'll put him there for now, though. Next up here, we're going to have Liam Martin. And I could truly put him down here. I could I could truly put him... I, I didn't see anything. I probably maybe above... Like I, I saw nothing from Liam Martin. I saw nothing from Liam Martin. What did Liam Martin do? Focus is a bit harsh. On Kurt Gate? Well, I don't know about that. But where would you put Liam, Liam Martin? He's definitely, I don't think he did the job. Is it Sam's his bottom? Bottom, bottom. Actually, Mama, I've got him in Archie Mama. I don't think Liam Martin had a good series at all. Very low, not that great. Was he better than Confuci? Confuci. That is who's Martin, exactly. Lucas is very low, not that great. Desmond says, wait, Martin was on the field. I thought Liam Martin was all right, had some great runs. I just didn't see anything. CC Confuci is not going to lie, but Liam Martin was kind of poor in game three. I'm going to put him above Confuci. I'm going to put him in Archie Mama. The fact that everyone's saying who is very telling, is what I would say. Because I normally say that Liam Martin is pretty decent. I think he's usually quite underrated. But I think now I was expecting a little bit more from him. I think now I would have been expecting a little bit him to evolve a little bit more and I guess be the player that I believe he could be. It hasn't really eventuated. I think all the Panthers really struggled throughout this series overall because they had targets on their back because of the whole Panthers notion. I'm going to put him in Aoshi Mama. I, I, I can understand why people say he's not that great with a couple of runs here and there, but overall, he didn't have any impact whatsoever for me throughout the entire series. All right, let's move on here, because, yeah, everyone's pretty much agreeing there. Let's move on to Lindsay Collins. Lindsay Collins obviously got injured very early in Game 3. Uh, what happened in Game 2? I can't even remember if he was really on the field too much in Game 2. Game 1, however, he was incredible. Game 1, I had him top three players on the field. I, I put him in elite when we had game one. Game two, I can't really remember a great deal from him. Game three was injured for the most part of it. I think that you probably look towards the did the job section for me. I think you probably look towards maybe, maybe there. I don't know. Yeah, maybe there, maybe did the job, maybe below Dan Gagai, above Dan Gagai. I'm going to put him here above Gagai. And I could even argue here. He had such a spectacular game one that I'm probably going to actually argue him there because no, no, he didn't have a bad, bad, bad game with the Collins. Game two wasn't great, but he didn't have a bad, bad game. Nano had a terrible game two and didn't play too much game one and was pretty good in game three. But also, I think Lindsay Collins still did enough to go above him there. So yeah, Collins has a solid run in game one. He was incredible game one. I had him top three. I had him top three, bro. I had him top three. So I'm going to put him 
in between Nano and, and Cotosau. Yeah, based on that game one, realistically, it, it does come down to that. Next up here, Matty Burton. I am very disappointed New South Wales didn't utilise him more last night. We saw one of the biggest, if not the biggest, kick in the history of rugby league. That's one of the biggest kicks I've ever seen in professional sport. I don't understand why they didn't give him the ball more. I understand that, that Queensland would try and lock him down, but he was still finding space. They kept him the ball to Luai Cleary, and their kicking games weren't working. It was very bland, very basic. I kept saying this on stream. I kept saying, like, it's basic. Get the ball to Burton. Burton's the threat. That's the whole reason you have a stadium. It came down, he let it bounce. If that ball bounces towards the try line, you've got New South Wales players already on the run. They're going to beat Pong and they're going to score a try. So keep giving him the ball there. Keep giving him the ball. Get, Pong, get Burton closer to the fifth tackle, play the ball, so you can give it to him and then whack it up. They didn't do that. And that was really disappointing for me. I thought game two was exceptional. Game one, he was not there. Game three, he, he, wasn't, impact, he wasn't put into the game enough. He wasn't put into the game enough. I, I really don't know where to put him here. He's definitely at the top end of the job or even low end of quality, but he didn't do it. What did he do in game three besides that kick? Game two was so good, but he didn't play game one. I, don't, I, I Honestly, do you probably have Blue White Bar? But that's the thing. It's the whole series, you know what I'm saying? It's the whole series, and I didn't see a great deal besides that one kick last night. He got punched. That's cool. Yeah, we saw that. Uh, Luai has a lot of growing up to do mentally. Absolutely. Not enough game time. Yeah, you know what? That's a good argument. It's, it's, oh, no, it's not, because he played two games. He played two full games. He played two full games. Burton was iced by Cleary and Luai waiting to be the hero. I'm a, uh, in my opinion, should have let him more bomb, especially. Game two, he did well, and in game three, he went missing. I'm going to put him here. I'm going to put him below... Oh, no, you know what? He still had more impact overall. I'm going to put... No, I'm going to put him here. They didn't utilize him enough. I'm going to put him below Jerome Luai. I'm going to put him Jerome, below Jerome Luai. It's very debatable. You could put him in quality, but the reason why I argue this is because they didn't utilize him in game three enough. They utilized him really, really well in game two, and he was incredible. That kick last night was perfect, and they didn't keep giving him the ball because Cleary and Luai kept taking it off him. So I think that he's been hampered because of his inside man of the halves that refused to give him the ball in the clutch moments that he would have absolutely killed it in for me. So I'm going Matty Burton at the top end and did the job there. I think that obviously if he had more um, free will in that third game, we would have seen him definitely in quality. If he had to play all three games, you could definitely you would have seen probably a, a top end of quality area. You may have even seen an elite, but it would come down to how much they utilize him and they didn't use him well enough for me. Cleary the ball hog, I don't even know, says. You could definitely make an argument for it, especially considering he wasn't great in regards to his kicking. Murray Kalangi, now he's absolutely going to go into not enough game time here. Um, I might have put him below um, Jacob Safi too, because obviously he didn't have a great game at all in game two. He was dreadful in game two, Murray Kalangi, and that's the only game we could go off. If we, uh, if, if he had have had a similar game last night, he wouldn't have gone there. Um, Murray Kalangi, young, lost his spot because obviously he got, I think he was part of the COVID crew with Cameron Munster. Uh, game one, he wasn't there. Game two, he was absolutely appalling. Uh, and then game three, he wasn't there. So you've got him in not enough game time. And it's it's frustrating for him because he wouldn't want him to prove everyone wrong after that game one, game two uh, scenario. But uh, I just realized, is Corey O's here? Is Corey O's here? Oh, Corey O's isn't even here too, guys. Corey O's isn't even here. Well, Corey O's would have gone in not enough game time, but he was good in game three. Corey O's is going to go... Actually, you know what? I'm going to write that down as well. Oh, I'm spewing that I forgot a couple of players here. I must be on I forgot a couple of players here. So Corey Oates. Corey Oates will go and we'll put we, we, we would have put Corey Oates into uh not enough game time. Because he only played the game one. Thought he was great though in game three. Next up here, Nathan Cleary. Hmm, this is this is a rough one. This is a rough one here. Game one was the one of the worst players on the field, if not the worst player on the field. Game two was the best player on the field. Game three went missing big time. Had a good kick there for Jerome Luai that ended up in a try. Uh, yeah, this is this mm, this is tough. Pino says clearly out to Melbourne. You cannot be a halfback with his credentials and go missing game two about three games. Ouchie, everyone's saying that game two was superb. In the same sense, what does that game two mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, what does game two actually mean? if you only have that one win and that was the only game he played well. Because game one and game three, he was not good. I don't know if I want to put him into Ouchie Mama, though. I really, it was pretty bland for the most part. I think due to his caliber, you'd nearly argue it. Bottom of quality, Tiger fan. No way. No way are you putting Nathan Cleary here. No chance. No shot. No shot are you putting him there, man. No shot. 
I'm going to still say that game two takes him out of Achimama. He still had enough of an impact. I'm going to put him here, and um, it's going to be I'm going to put him above. So I'm going to put him there, and and that's on the basis of what Keno just said. Actually, that's that's on the basis of what Keno just said. So I would probably put him into the job. Maybe no. So I would probably put him onto Altimum because of game one and game three. But game two, he was so good that he obviously puts himself at least probably into uh, midway through. Midway through, maybe not that great. The only reason why I have him, and no, you know, it's it's, it's a tough one. Here. I'm going to put him in not that great though. And and because what Keno said was right, is that you can't have a player of his caliber go missing game one, game three, have a great game, game two but not come through in the clutch. And he didn't have come through in the clutch. He actually was the re- mm. he was actually the reason as well. Ben Hunt came over the top over there. Um, I'm going to say, based on his calibre, I'm going to put him in. Oh, it's painful, but It's painful because that game two was so special. But based on his calibre, game one and game three, yeah, Cleary below Yo for sure. Yeah, I'm going to put him here. It's a big call. I'm going to put him there, though. And you can see two spinal members, two spine members in that outer number section right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put him in Dowsing Mama. It's a big call to make, but that's what I'm going to do. Alrighty, next up here, we're going to move into Paddy Carrigan, who actually did get Man of the Series. I, for me, would put him there. I still had Ponga personally the best. I thought Ponga was going to win it, but Paddy Carrigan was superb in Game 1, Game 3. Game 2, still made a lot of tackles, uh, but I, I personally did have Ponga a little bit better. Paddy Carrigan, for a guy coming back from an ACL, you know, debuting in Origin, have a great year for Broncos. Just sat, just simply incredible. You know, every single run he made was tough. Every single tackle he made was rough. Everything that he did was just phenomenal. And, you know, you've really got to appreciate guys like a Paddy Carrigan who just run the ball and just don't give a shit about their body. Justin Olam's the same as a centre from Papua New Guinea. Paddy Carrigan runs the ball like that, and he's he's a pacey player too for the size that he's got there. So I've got him an elite. I personally, I understand you can put him in one, you can put him in three, you can put him in four, but you wouldn't take him out of elite. There's no way. There's no way. Uh, Carrigan deserved the Man of Series. And Carrigan got the Man of Series. I had him I had him below Ponga, but Carrigan obviously won the Man of Series, so they took him. And I get it. I do. I really do. I understand it. So yeah, I'm going to put him in the lead there above Tedesco and below Ponga. Next up here, we've got Payne Huss. Did Payne Huss have enough game time? In Game 3, he didn't play. Game 2, he was... I didn't really see a great deal of Payne Huss Game 2. Game 1... Did he have enough game time? I don't know what chat guys. Did Payne Haas have enough game time? How many minutes does this guy have? I can't even think about really what he did overall. I, I did say I can't really think about what he did. Sam says bottom. Bottom of what though? You keep saying bottom. Uh, not that great. High or to the job low. Not really to be honest. Did his job. Uh, Cece Fafita says uh, Haas was solid for run-ups. Only got not enough game time to be honest. I don't think he did or he just went missing when he was on the field. Can someone please get me how much... Not that great. Azura Methods says, played all of the first game. 37 minutes game two. Okay, we're, we're going to put him... We're going to put him here. I'm going to put him there. I'm going to put him there. I'm going to put him below Kirk Cable. So he has had enough game time. He played, you know, game one. He played, you know, game two. And didn't play game three. That's enough game time for me. Uh, people are saying enough game time. Not that great. It's very mixed here. There is not that great. There is at the job. There is not enough game time. I'm going to put him there because I just didn't see enough from him. It does show he has enough game time, personally. And I think Kate Russell has that try to his name. It really does help him up above those other guys down there. And Kate Russell is still solid for the most part, besides, obviously, um, the, the polarizing nature of last night's game for me. So I'm going to put him into uh, the top of the not that great. It could be harsh. It could be harsh. But even when he was on the field, he didn't really show a great deal of impact for the game for me. Alrighty, we've got Selwyn Cobbo coming up next here for Queensland. He played all of game one and all of game two, guys. He has played enough game time. I know, obviously, prayers up the big fella. Hope he's all right after yesterday. Uh, he did go off early. Uh, didn't come back. Uh, Jerome Luai, obviously, a piece of shit. Uh, standing on the top of him. For me, Selwyn Cobbo had a decent enough game one. Game two, he was really, really poor, though. You've got to remember he's a rookie. You've got to remember he's a debutante. But you can't tell me that he was better than Daniel Supo. You, you can't tell me. I, I'd probably put him, if anything, there. And you could even argue down here. You could. You could You could even argue down in, in the not-that-great section. I'm going to put him at the very bottom of did the job, though. I'm going to put him at the very bottom of did the job. Um, but season feeder, I, I do agree. I, I, I could put him in not-that-great because of that game, too, where he was dreadful. Uh, oh. 
No, you know what? I, I really, I'm going to put him in here. I think that game two was so poor from him. He needed experience of Corio in this other wing. He needed some some help there. He didn't have it. I'm, and I think game one, he was, he was, he was reasonable. You know, it was okay. He had nice assists, which is fine. I'm going to put him at the very top. I'm going to put him at the very top there. Uh, Loaded the job, high, not that great. Yeah, I, I don't. I think that either one here, it's either bottom of the job or top of not that great. It just kind of it goes. It's just because that game too, the wingers got exposed, man. Mark Talangi and also someone Cabo got absolutely exposed on those wings, and I think that that's enough to put him into that next tier down. Personally, I think it is. If only only Cabo didn't have a head knock. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what's unfortunate. You know, Cabo could have had a really good game. I actually say this. Cabo would have scored the first try of the game if he was on the field because they you obviously saw Ponga pass that ball over the top of the right-hand side, which was a peak play for a Cabo, which just lofts it up there and Cabo runs onto it full blast. That's what that was designed for. It's unfortunate that it obviously didn't work out because Cabo wasn't there and Kate was in the wing and Kate was shouldn't be there. Well, Dan Gago was there uh, on the wing and he's not a winger. Uh, but I think someone Cabo probably would have had a good game last night. It's just unfortunate that he wasn't there due to injury. So for there, he's going to go not that great. I think you can understand my reasoning based on that game too, uh, but long way to go there for him. Now, CSC Vitalikai. I'm going to put him into a section here. I'm going to. I'm very well aware that he didn't play an unbelievable amount through game three, and also a, not an unbelievable amount in game two. I don't think he really played. Oh, but you, you, you do probably have to still put him in enough game time. If I was to put him somewhere, I would put him dead set down here. I would put him dead set there. And the reason being is because... Although he made maybe one good run, he made maybe maybe one good run, Talakai was not fantastic. He dropped the ball in key moments. He made mistakes in key moments yesterday. You know what? I'm going to leave him there. I'm going to leave him there. And it's controversial because on a technicality basis, you probably put him in not enough game time. But the fact of the matter is, is that he played in two games. Freddie decided to only use him in certain times. And in those times... He did not play fantastic at all. He made a lot of mistakes. He was a big reason New South Wales lost last night. He, yeah, he was incredibly poor for me. So I don't necessarily know if the Origin Arena is for him. Maybe the pressure and the, the uh, I guess, the atmosphere of a cauldron, sun court, hot, 52,000 people there swimming against you, maybe got to him. But I, I've definitely got him in. Yeah, I, I've personally got him in uh, in, in our team. not for me. Uh, get my watch to make Mouse's out for sure. Uh, Tigers fans, I really like Talakai, but he was definitely uh, bad. I'll put him in not enough game time, but like very bottom. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Next up here, Stephen Crichton. And for me, I'm going to put him there. And this is unfortunate for Stephen Crichton. This is very unfortunate for Stephen Crichton. The reason why I'm going to put him there is because of Freddie Fittler. It's Freddie Fittler's fault he's there. It's, it's, if Freddie Fittler is a big reason why he, he's, he's there. Um, Stephen Crichton, I don't believe he didn't try. I think that obviously he's tried his heart out. I think that obviously he wants to be great. He wants to be that guy. But he wasn't that guy. He was pretty poor in game one when he came off the bench. Really poor. They made, he gave away that penalty. I think he even got Simbin, didn't he? Uh, or is it just a penalty? I can't remember. Might have been a Simbin as well. Game two, he didn't do anything. And game three, he made a lot of mistakes again. I think that Jack White should have been the guy there. Jack White, after a fantastic game one, should have been coming back for game three. They obviously went with Stephen Crichton. That's fine, but I think he was a big part of why they lost last night. I do. I really do. Uh, Charlotte says, wait, so who do you go for an origin? Well, you should know. Uh, CCP says, Stephen Crichton is not a state of origin material, especially in the position he was put in. Well, he's a special centre. What do you mean, especially in the position he was put in? He's a special centre. What other position could you put him in? He's not a 14, because he doesn't, he's not really a fullback. And he definitely doesn't play in the halves. He's not a winger. And they, they put him in the centres. Obviously, he's tried to play fullback at Panthers, and it doesn't really work out for him. Um, I, I think that Stephen Crichton is a good player in the NRL. He's above average. He's a decent quality player in the NRL. But unfortunately, Origin Arena is not for him. He got exposed in this one, and it, it really is unfortunate for him because he did try his heart out. But unfortunately, trying your heart out doesn't get the job done. So, yeah, I've got him at the very, very bottom of Archie Mama, and I think Jack Whiten was the play. I think Jack Whiten was... To play. Next up here, let's go to Tino Fasu Malawi. He's obviously a very controversial figure right now. Love the bloke. What a man. Uh, you know, some people say that obviously he's trying to break the fight up, which is actually technically what happened. He did break the fight up. Other people are saying he's putting his arm around a, a New South Wales player uh, and, and headlocking him. I get both sides of it. I disagree with one side of it, but in the same sense, I'm not going to sit here and debate that. 
Ten of Ice Malawi didn't get enough game time in Game 2. He was actually very good for the minutes that he was on. But he didn't get enough game time in Game 2. Game 1 uh, didn't really do a great deal. Game 3 definitely did the job. So for me, I've got him to do the job here. I don't know where he did the job that I had him, though. Yeah, Tina did the job. Everyone's saying... Tina, Michael, Mitchell Jeffries is out of number. That's stupid, bro. That's absolutely stupid. Um, Tino, for me, I would have maybe... Oh, well, he's definitely... He's not up the top-end area. He's definitely around this area here. And would he be above or below Gagai there? Would he be above or below Gagai? I think t I think maybe below Tupo. I think, yeah, I'm going to put him there. I'm going to put him below Tupo and above Kamara because Tupo still had that great game one and game two. I think Tino was consistent. He was never bad. He didn't get enough game time in game two. He played well-ish in game one, and then he played pretty well in game three, but nothing spectacular. So I think him and Cameron Murray are pretty much together there. I don't necessarily think that Tino was above him or below him. I'm going to put him right there with Cameron Murray, uh, and I think that's relatively fair. Um, Tino did the job, Tigers fan says. Not that great high end, though, Lucas says. Sam says quality. Oh, I wouldn't be putting him in quality, mate. I wouldn't be putting him in quality, personally. Uh, not for me. Uh, Sam Fafito says somewhere in the middle of did the job. Yeah, well, there we go. All right, we've got Tommy Dearden here. A uh, hard one. This is a hard one because, obviously, he had a great game last night. This was exceptional from him. Tom Dearden comes in and was just fantastic, really. You know, I was actually really impressed. I didn't believe necessarily what he was going to produce. Obviously, I love that he was able to have his redemption story in regards to he got tossed out of Brisbane, you know, insults galore around him. Uh, the one up to the Cowboys. No one believed in him. Having a great season with the Cowboys and was incredible in Game 3 in replacement of Cameron Munster. Didn't play Game 2. Didn't play game one. I think you're probably going to put him in not enough game time there. But if you're going to say, based on, off of yesterday, if you're going to say based off of yesterday, you're probably going to be putting him here. You're probably going to be putting Tommy Deaton there. Truly, you are probably put him there. But I, I think we're going to have to put him in not enough game time. But is it the high end? Is it the high end? Mebido says quality. Uh, Matty Smiles did the job. <laughs> last night, there's no way you can say he did the job. He was quality last night. Lucas says, will be quality, though. TDB Rise is quality. Not enough game time, but solid game three. Ryan Bottoms says, should put a clear and elite. was easily coins. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Yeah, we'll put him in not enough game time there, guys. Based on game three individually, I'd be putting him into quality section. Uh, but based off of the series, he only played game three. Uh, but was very good in that. All right, two more guys to go here, guys. I know, obviously, we missed Jack White and Corey Oates, but we did answer where we would have put them. So Tom Gilbert here, he's also going to be a guy that goes into uh, that section there of not enough game time. I thought he was still decent last night. I thought he really put in some great efforts. I thought that, uh, for me, uh, Tom Gilbert was was fantastic in the runs he was making and defensively as well. I think he was solid. Uh, but you've got to put him in not enough game time there. Um, and if I was going to say, based off of the game he had last night, I'll put him at the top end of the, the, the job section. Uh, but obviously, this is a serious ranking. So yeah, we'll put him down there in not enough game time. Final guy here, Val Holmes, and I think he had a superb series. I'm going to put him here. He's not above Benny Hunt, uh, but he's definitely in the elite section for me. I think Val Holmes in every single game was absolutely fantastic. I think that obviously game one, he was quality. Uh, game two, he was it's still one of the better players of Queensland on the field. I don't think that Val Holmes was was one of the poor players in the field there. I think that overall, obviously, um, he still was the, the one fighting for the, the possession and, and fighting for some extra yardage and, and just continuously just cracking down and, and, and giving it his best go. I don't think that Val Holmes was a, a part of that big loss in Game 2. I think Game 3, he was absolutely incredible. Again, scored the first try scorer. I called that as well with you guys. Um, I think that he was incredible throughout the series. And, and um, yeah, low end. Low end elite lose. There's no way I'm putting him above Benny Hunt uh, or James Nesco, Paddy Carrigan, or Kalen Ponga. But, yeah, I've, I've, I've got him in elite. I just think that he was too too good to put on level where you look at Brian oh, you look at Cherry Evans, and you look at uh, Cameron Munster, and there's still... I, I guess there's still quite a bit of... Um, yeah, there's, 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 like, there's a little bit there that you can still put on a negative... No, you know what I'm saying? That's a little tiny little bit of a negative note there. Um, so yeah, I've got there in qual in elite, and I think that overall, I, I, I don't think there's a great deal of disagreement. I think some people might say Nathan Cleary could be a little bit higher, it's not that great. Um, I think there's not enough game time, those guys. You can't really argue it. Uh, Deaton, Saifidi, Gilbert, and Talangi all played only, only the one game there. Uh, 
I don't think much of the not that great section is, is too debatable. Maybe Payne Huff could be into the bottom end and do the job there. Some people say Antino lower into the not that great section. It could be moved up a little bit as well. I'd probably put him there. I would definitely have him there. Um, you could argue... No, Luai's not quality. I think this is pretty fine. Maybe the one argument is that you could probably put Burton to the low end of quality, but I think they will, they didn't utilise him well enough in Game 3 is what I'm saying there. That's what I'm, probably, that's what I'm saying there. Uh, Tigers fans, where do you rate Freddie and Billy? Uh, I would say that Freddie Fittler would go into Archie Mama. I think that, yeah, I, I, I would probably say Freddie Fittler. I'm going to write this down here so that it has come up. It comes up at the end there. I should have put this down. Uh, but Freddie Fittler, I would I would put him into Archie Mama. I think he made some really ballsy calls out like the series. Obviously not picking Jake to in game one. That didn't work out. He picked him game two and game three and he worked out. I think that Stephen Crichton throughout all three games was poor. I think they didn't utilize the tactic of, of giving the ball to Burton as much as they should have, which is a, a big negative there on, on, on Freddie Fitler for not preparing them in that way. I think that the, the forward choices, Regan Campbell-Gillard obviously coming in, they're getting dropped, was really odd. It's like, do you know what you're doing then? Like, you've come in and picked a guy, and then he doesn't get selected again. You're like, oh, he doesn't fit the New South Wales system. He didn't play terribly. He's probably the better forward in game one from New South Wales, but you still blame him. It, it really doesn't make sense there for Freddie Fitler's part overall. I think that, yeah, he was probably a big part, if not the biggest part, about why they lost. And then obviously Crichton, Whiten. Yeah, so many problems there with Freddie Fitler for me. I think that he was a little bit out of his depth this time around. And for a team that's meant to be a dynasty, you know, a team that's meant to... Everyone keeps saying, oh, yeah, this New South Wales team would beat that eight years in a row. That eight years in a row team would absolutely pick this Blues team apart. They would slap this Blues team. You know why? Because the mentality. This Blues team doesn't have the mentality. Dan Stesco has the mentality. The rest of the Blues team don't have the mentality. They don't have the mentality to beat Billy Slater, Cameron Smith, Pippa Cronk, Jono Thurston, um, Justin Hodges, you know, Corey Parker, Sammy Thayday, those guys, those big buffers. It, no way. No way for me. So, um, And I think that for a team that's meant to have all these quality players that could be the best of their generation, best ever generation New South Wales players, Freddie Fittler's not doing the job there for them. Has won, I think, three out of five series, which is congratulations to him. 2018, 2019... 2021. I don't know if he was there in 2017. I think Queensland won 2017, actually. So 2018, 2019, and 2021. Three out of five. And that's apparently the worst Queensland team in 2020 and one of the worst Queensland teams in 2022. And yet they still won those two years. So, yeah, I lay a lot of blame on Freddie Fittler there. For Billy Slater, however, I would say that Billy Slater was... I would say that he would be in top of quality. I think that maybe not so much elite because that game two still happened. I think it was very predictable. It's because it was obviously outside of Queensland and New South Wales. But I think that I'd probably put Billy Slater into the uh, into the quality section. There is still stuff to work on for Billy. I think that it was an incredible back against the wall performance. I think it was a huge part of why they won. Uh, it was a great selection of Tommy Dearden there that really helped him out. It's, it wasn't a walk-up start. There are other guys he could have considered, but he did take Tommy Dearden there. Uh, you know, he has gone with Jeremiah Nano was a big call. Um, there is a, a few, he went with the big decision of going Benny Hunt in game one over Harry Grant and putting him into the 14. Uh, that was a huge call that obviously Freddie Fittler ended up cha uh, cha taking and trying to utilize himself. Uh, and I thought that overall, Billy Slater had a very quality series, but there is still stuff to work on there for him. So I'd put him at the top end of quality. But guys, that's going to do us here today. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are after this video goes live and, and gets dropped. Go into the comment section and comment away. Obviously, this is a live chat when it gets dropped. Go into the comment section. Let me know your thoughts. Obviously, hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already. And subscribe if you are new around here. I appreciate you as usual. Obviously, this weekend, we've got two live streams tomorrow night for the NRL. Two NRL games tomorrow night, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, we've got Saturday. where will be going to the Titans-Broncos game at Seabus. Uh, and I'll stream a couple of rubber union games, the National Rubber Union games in the morning. Plus a rubber union game late at night, uh, which is the Wales South Africa game. And on Sunday, we've got three NRL games. So, big weekend and coming here, guys. Uh, like I said, thumbs up, subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.